Good morning and welcome to FBC News. I am David Hesselman with a special election season report. As you know, we are nearing the climax of this election season and we are soon to vote for the next leader of our nation. With that in mind, we want to consider what are the attributes of a good leader. Someone who has a vision, confidence, courage, is committed, humble, decisive, and sensitive to the will of the people. Let's pause for a moment to hear from two such leaders. Our first guest is one you are all familiar with as a highly regarded leader of the Hebrew people. My name is Moses. I am known as a great prophet, respected by believers of Judaism and Christianity today. Most importantly, I seek God's will and live according to it. Look for yourself. In the book of Exodus, it tells of my birth, being raised in the Pharaoh's household, and then fleeing the presence of Pharaoh, and listening to God in the midst of a burning bush. Moses, Moses, God said, I will send you to Pharaoh so that you may bring my people the sons of Israel out of Egypt. For 40 long years, I led two and a half million complaining people through a hot desert after departing from Egypt. I stuck to this task, even though I myself would not be able to enter the promised land. During the journey, I gave the people God's laws to live by. I then laid hands on Joshua, who would lead the sons of Israel into the land of milk and honey. At 120 years of age, I can honestly say I knew God personally. After my passing, Joshua said these words about me, since Moses, no prophet has risen in Israel like Moses whom the Lord knew face to face. And now let's hear from another devoted leader of the nation of Israel who served around 300 years later. Hello, my name is David Barisha, whom you Westerners call King David, son of Jesse. From a young age, I watched over my father's flock of sheep but little did I know that the Lord was preparing me to watch over the 12 tribes of Israel. It was there, under the night sky, that the Lord gave me an intense desire to know Him. I often would play and sing songs to the Lord. I wrote many of them down. Some of those songs are still sung to this day. It was also there that I learned to trust the Lord for His strength. On occasions, I killed both lions and bears. By His power, I was also able to defeat the champion of the Philistines, the giant Goliath, nine foot nine. Oy vey, was he huge. The Lord gave us many victories over our enemies, and when I was anointed king, a strong and prosperous kingdom was established. I brought the Ark of God's Covenant to Jerusalem. I spent much time in making preparations for the construction of the temple for my Lord. God made me three covenant promises. First, that my seed, the Messiah, the Son of God would come. Second, my son Solomon would build a house for God. And third, Messiah, my descendant, would rule forever. But in my darkest days, I committed grievous sins. The Lord disciplined me and convicted me of my sin. When I repented, he restored to me the joy of my salvation. Surely, His goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life, 
and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There you have it, folks. Two incredible men of God, two amazing men of faith, two extraordinary leaders of God's people. Which one is your favorite? Moses or King David? During the month of November, you have a chance to choose one of these Old Testament leaders as you participate in the fall snowcap food and toiletry drive. Simply place your donation in the basket in front of the picture portraying your favorite biblical leader. This election season, choose for yourself, your favorite man of God. We can only wish that these two men were on the ballot this election year. This is David Hesselman reporting for FBC News.